Question 15a. We're given the shape is a cylinder and it's got a base with a radius of 2 and a height of 10. We're not given any units, so we'll just call them units. And we're asked to find the lateral area, surface area, and volume of each of the shapes. So let's start off with the lateral area. The first thing we need to do is find the perimeter of the base. Then we need to multiply that by the height. Remember with the perimeter of a circle, we're really talking about the circumference. So the circumference is equal to 2 pi times the radius. In this case, the radius is 2, so it's 2 pi times 2. Multiplying that out, we end up with 12.566, which we round off to 12.57. So that gives us our circumference. Now we can go ahead and look for the lateral area. So the lateral area, remember, is equal to that 12.57 times the height, which is 10. Multiplying that out, we end up with 125.7. Now we need to find the surface area. To find the surface area, first of all, we're going to find the surface area of the base. And then we'll multiply that by 2 because that gives us the top and the bottom of the cylinder. And then we'll add that to the lateral area. So let's first find the area of the base which is pi r squared. We know that the radius is 2, so it's pi times 2 squared. We multiply that out, and we get 12.57 units. Strictly a coincidence that the area is equal to the circumference in this case. Now we're going to multiply that by 2, because remember we've got a top and a bottom to the cylinder. And if we multiply it by 2, we end up with 25.14 units squared. Now to get the total surface area, we're going to take the 25.14 that we just got and add that to the 125.7 that we got for the lateral area. And we end up with a surface area of 150.84 square units. Finally, we'll calculate the volume. To do that, we need the area of the base multiplied by the height. We already found the area of the base was equal to 12.57. I'm going to multiply that by the height, which is 10. So the volume is 125.7 cubic units. So to recap, we have our lateral area, our surface area, and the total volume. 15b. This time we're working with a rectangular prism. We're going to start with looking for the lateral area. So we've got a diagram of the shape. The first thing we want to do in finding the lateral area is think about what we're trying to locate, first of all. So in this case, we want the front and the comparable face at the back, and then both of the sides. What we're not including, of course, are the top and the bottom, which you can't see. So if we start with the front face, that's 15 by 16, and there are two of those, front and back. Then we want to look at the side panel here. So that side panel is 15 high and 5 wide. So we've got 15 times 5, and again there are two of those, so we multiply that by 2. Calculating that out, we end up with 480 plus 150, which adds up to 630 units squared. And now we're going to find the surface area. To find the surface area, we're going to take the lateral area and add in the area of the top and the bottom. So the lateral area we just found was 630. The area of the top is 16 times 5. And because there's a top and a bottom, we can simply multiply that same size by 2. So we've got 630 plus 16 times 5 is 80 times 2, which makes it 160. And we add all that together, and we end up with 790 units squared. Finally, we're going to calculate the volume. To calculate the volume, we take the area of the base and multiply by the height. So we found the area of the base was 16 times 5, and we're going to multiply that times the height, which is 15. Multiplying them all together, we end up with 1,200 units cubed. Number 15c. In this case, we have a triangular prism. Looking at the triangular prism, we can see that we want to find, first of all, the area of these two faces, 
plus the area of the back face here that we can't see. Once we've found all of those, we'll add them all together. So the area, if we take a look at this first face, is 8 and it's 4 high. So that's the first piece. Then we're going to add that to the next face, which is 6 by 4. Then the back face, which we can't exactly see because it's hidden behind the top of the prism, it's going to be 10 wide and 4 high as well. That gives us 32 plus 24 plus 40. Adding them all together gives us 96 units squared. So that's our lateral area, 96 units squared. Now let's look at the surface area. Surface area is equal to the lateral area plus the area of the base and the top. So we can say it's the area of the base times 2 because the top and the bottom are exactly the same size. So we've got the lateral area, which we said is 96, plus we're going to add that half the base of the triangle times its height. Looking at the triangle we're talking about, it's this triangle here. So we're going to say that this is the base and this is the height. So the triangle has a base of 8 and a height of 6. And then we're going to multiply that by 2 because it's the top and the bottom. So we've got 96 plus half times the base, which is 8, times the height, which is 6, and multiplying that times 2. So we've got 96 plus half of 8 is 4, times 6 is 24, times 2 is 48. So the surface area is 144 square units. Finally, the volume. Volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. We found the area of the base here when we did this calculation came out to 24. So we can say it's 24 times the height, which is 4. Therefore, the volume is 96 units cubed. 15D. In this question, we're looking at a pyramid shape. We've been given the base, which it turns out is a square. It's 20 by 20 units. And then they give us the distance from the peak down the center of the face to the middle of the line below. We're going to need that in order to figure out some of the information. So we've got the base that's 20 by 20. We've got the center of the triangle of one of the faces, which is 26. Now we need to find the height of the pyramid. So in order to do that, we first of all are going to identify the very center of the floor of the pyramid, very center of the base. And that's basically going to be halfway along each of the sides. So that splits the sides into two. Then we're going to take from that center point, that's going to go straight up to the top of the pyramid. In doing that, we can form a right angle triangle here. So it's a little hard to see, but essentially you think if you had a pyramid and you dropped a string down from the very top center point, it would land right in the middle of the base. If you drew a line from there directly out to the side, it would meet the middle of the side, and that would form this triangle. It goes from here to there, and it's a right angle triangle. Once we have a right angle triangle, then we have all the information we need to find the height. The height is going to be one side of a right angle triangle, so we can use Pythagorean theorem in order to be able to solve that. So we've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, the a we'll say this side down here, is half of one of the bases. So that's 10 squared plus b squared equals the hypotenuse, which is 26 squared. Therefore, b squared is equal to 26 squared minus 10 squared. That means b is equal to the square root of 26 squared minus 10 squared. If we multiply those out, we end up with 576. We take the square root of 576 and we end up with 24. So by finding b, that is actually our height. So we've got the height of the triangle. We can now use that information to help us find the other information that we need. So once we've got the height, I can start with the volume in this case. The volume is equal to the area of the base times the height divided by 3. So the area of the base 
is 20 by 20, and the height of the triangle we've now found is 24. Dividing all that by 3, we end up with 9600 divided by 3, which is equal to 3200 cubic units. Now we'll look for the lateral area. So the lateral area is equal to the perimeter of the base times the side divided by 2. To find the lateral area, we need the perimeter of the base. We're multiplying that by the slant height. The perimeter of the base is 4 times 20. Since the base has 20 on each side, we need 4 of those to form the perimeter. And then we're multiplying that times the slant height, which is 26. Multiplying that out, we end up with 1,040 units squared. That gives us our lateral area. So now we need to find the surface area. The surface area in this case, there is no top, there's just a bottom. So we have the lateral area plus the area of the bottom. Lateral area is 1040, and the area of the bottom is 20 by 20. Multiplying that out, it's 400. Adding it to the 1040, we end up with 1440 units squared. So that is our surface area. 15e, we've got a cone with a slant height of 23.4 and the diameter of the base is 16. If we've got the diameter of a base, we know that in most of the calculations when we're working with circles, we're actually more interested in radius. So that gives us our diameter, which means our radius, of course, is half of that, which is going to be 8. We can go ahead now and find the lateral area. The lateral area is equal to 2 pi times the radius times the slant height. So that's 2 pi times the radius, which is 8, times the slant height of 23.4. Multiplying all of that together, we end up with 1,176.2 units squared. Once we've got our lateral area, now we can find our surface area. Our surface area is equal to the lateral area plus the area of the base. Since we don't have a top, there's no top to add in. So that means we've got 1176.2 plus the area of the base. The area of the base, we'll do as a side calculation, of course, is pi times the radius squared. So that's pi times 8 squared, which when you multiply it out, the 8 squared is 64 times pi gives you 201.1. So we can put that into our surface area calculation. 201.1. Adding them together, we end up with 1,377.3 units squared. Once we've got our surface area, now we can go ahead and tackle the volume. So the volume is equal to one-third the area of the base times the height, or the area of the base times the height divided by 3. However, we don't have the height yet, so we need to find the height of the cone first. To do that, we're going to form a triangle by dropping a line straight down from the center of the cone at the top, right to the bottom, and then that gives us, that intersects with the radius at the bottom as well. So we've got a 90 degree angle. The line that we just dropped down from the top gives us the height that we want. The bottom here is the radius, and of course the third side, which is the hypotenuse, is our slant height. So that leaves us with everything we need now to be able to find the height. So we'll do that as a side calculation over here. The height squared plus the radius squared will be equal to the hypotenuse, which is the slant height squared. So h squared plus the radius squared, which is 8 squared, is going to be equal to 23.4 squared. That means that h squared is equal to 23.4 squared minus 8 squared, which is equal to 483.56. Now we want h, so we'll take the square root of 483.56, which gives us 21.99. With that height now, we can plug that into the volume equation. We already found the area of the base as 201.1. Multiply that by the height that we just found of 21.99. Multiplying it all out, 
we end up with 1,474.1 units cubed.